What is up guys, back for another video. Um, do take out your notebook and your pen and paper and take a lot of notes. So I'm gonna call this, you know, probably the most valuable video that's gonna be on my channel. I'm gonna put together a um, comprehensive guide, master class on starting a pressure washing business. A lot of the essential things you need to know. So I will be packing a lot of information in this video. I'm gonna try to keep it between 30 to 45 minutes. Yes, you'll still have questions about it in this video, but the whole point of this video is to really teach you how to fish versus just give you a fish. So you're gonna learn some, we're, in this video we're gonna go over, um, you know, setups, chemicals, wash methods, uh, marketing, a little bit of pricing. I'm gonna try to touch on a lot of essential areas in this video. So we're just gonna be rolling through information. So at any point you get confused, just stop, pause, write it down, um, and just go back and rewatch this video. But with no further ado, and I will be checking my phone at some points because I have to look at my notes to make sure that um, I go everything. I go over everything I want to go over. Um, like I said, I do have a lot to cover in this video. Um, going back to the roots, just the camera and the whiteboard, just like we did, you know, a couple years ago. One of the videos helped grow this channel was you just get out and teaching. And so I've, you know, since that period in time, I've learned a lot more. And so I just want to pass that information to you guys. Disclaimer: Mind my face; it probably looks a little puffy. Uh, I've been sick and the medicine, the steroids they gave me helped the sickness, but then it gave me some adverse effects and my face looks fat right now. I'm looking like the nutty professor. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. And so we're going to start off with the first thing when talking about starting a pressure washing business. First, let's talk about what is pressure washing to start off with. And so some things I'm going to write, some things I'm not. Sometimes I'm just going to talk. But one, let's start off with um, just, you know, getting an idea of what is pressure washing. So obviously, Pressure washing involves a pressure washer, which is our money-making machine, right? And so with your pressure washing machines, you're going to have, let's say I'm throw a random number. The, we'll, we'll talk about this. When you have a pressure washer, there's two main factors you want to look at. One, the GPM, that's the gallons per minute, which means the volume of water the machine can output. Versus two, the PSI, which is the pressure, how powerful the water, um, how, like, how powerful the water it can output, right? So a pressure washer. A lot of th people think though, when, they, when they're when they getting into pressure washing, they think that a lot of the cleaning is done through pressure washing. So people call and say, I want my house pressure washed. I want this pressure wash. A lot of times guys, we're not even really pressure washing. We're using the pressure washing machine to do the job, to do the rinsing and applying chemical, but we're not actually using high pressure to wash. So the first important thing to note when it comes to pressure washing is knowing the difference between pressure washing and soft washing. And as you, um, you know, engage in this industry more, you'll learn those two differences. So soft washing versus pressure washing, right? And let's just go into the board. Pressure versus soft washing. Okay, so you can see that pressure versus soft washing. All right, um, I probably should have wrote it a different way. Should have wrote it this way. But anyway, so pressure. Pressure washing is the method of using high pressure to clean certain surfaces. So a lot of times we use higher pressure and still not too crazy. We use higher pressure on things like brick and concrete. Um, you know, when we're surface cleaning, that's when we're using more higher pressure, but we're still, it's, that still involves a little bit of soft washing as well, right? But when we're doing pressure washing, we're depending on the pressure to do the cleaning. Now, as a professional in the industry, you'll, learn, you'll come to learn that pressure isn't what's doing most of the cleaning. Yes, we need a pressure washer, but pressure isn't doing most of the cleaning. Then we have soft washing, right? Soft washing really just means, um, you know, we're washing under pretty much, say like a thousand PSI. Um, the safe range is pretty much about, you know, 500 PSI to a thousand. That's kind of soft washing, right? And soft washing is mainly depending on the chemicals that do most of the work. And um, so, so, for example, we soft wash roofs, right? When we soft wash the roof, we're actually using what's called a soft wash machine. Whole different machine from a pressure washer. And that could be ran, we'll talk about that more a little bit later, but that could be ran from a, a 12 volt system, air diaphragm, um, uh, gas pump. Those are just different methods of a soft wash machine. But anyway, so soft washing is a method of washing using low pressure and chemicals. Pressure washing is a method of using high pressure. Um, that's what depending on do most of the cleaning. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So that's just a brief overview, kind of a, um, of pressure washing versus soft washing. So once again, high pressure um, is obviously the pressure washing part. Soft washing is a method of using low pressure and chemicals to do our cleaning. 
So, now that we're talking about soft washing versus pressure washing, let's get into equipment that's needed, right? So, um, when starting off, let's talk about pressure washers first. Pressure washers. All right, so let's talk about one. I just talked about, so one of the per important factors we want to look at, we're going to write down some things. GPM, PSI, and also we're going to look at direct drive and belt drive. Also we're going to look at commercial duty. Alright, so this is going to cover a lot right here, right? So pressure washers. You're looking for a pressure washer to get started in the industry. What are some important factors to look at? A lot of guys, um, you know, question, can I get started with this pressure washer, that pressure washer? Which one is best? So in this video, I want to give you guys um, information. I want to give you guys the best, I would say, the best ground level to start at to get your business to where you want to go faster, right? So this video is not really going to be about starting off with nothing because if you start with nothing, it's going to be kind of difficult to grow your business. Can you do it? Yes, I started with nothing and, you know, I was able to get my business to over $100,000. But, guys, I I'm going to recommend that you start right here at what I'm about to teach you. You'll be able to get a lot faster and have more reliable equipment. So, one, let's talk about this factor right here. When we're looking for a pressure washer, we're to look at GPM, right? And what is a good foundation for GPM to start at? We want to look at at least four GPM, right? So four GPM, that's four gallons per minute. Why four gallons per minute? Because when it comes to washing, gallons per minute has a lot, has a lot to do with the speed of, what we, of which we can wash and rinse, right? And so when we're washing, most of our time we're doing houses, which is one of my most popular services we're offering, which we'll get into services. But when you're washing, it's about speed and efficiency and quality and being able to reach certain you know, levels. So because when we're washing, a lot of times, getting back to soft washing versus pressure washing, learning how to soft wash, you're going to be able to clean from the ground. If you're just pressure washing, you're climbing up ladders and all over the place and taking you forever. So when we soft wash, we're able to clean from the ground at low pressure and also work a lot faster and more efficient. So your 4 GPM machine is going to allow you to um, clean concrete faster too because you're going to be able to uh, push, um, use a surface cleaner, right? And surface cleaners are, are very dependent on GPM, on how fast they spin, which is, will affect the quality. We'll get into this stuff later, guys. I know a lot of this is going to be confusing, especially for newbies, but I'm going through a lot of information right now, so I might be all over the place. But anyway, so we're going to look at getting a 4 gallon per minute machine. Most of the time, if you're getting a 4 gallon per minute machine, the PSI is probably going to be around 4,000 PSI on the machine um, is how powerful it's going to be. Now, PSI can be regulated. The way we, we we're not, like, once again, we're not, we're never, we're never probably ever using 4,000 PSI. I, I never use uh, pressure that high. So the way that the pressure is regulated is one, through the unloader valve. Like I said, I don't mess with that. But two, the main, the main reason, the main way pressure is regulated is through your nozzle sizes which we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Let's just go over these basic factors first. So we're looking for a pressure washer. We'll look for a 4 GPM. And like I said, it's probably gonna be around 4,000 PSI is usually the, the numbers in those machines. So when you get into machines though, you have, two, you have two main types of pumps, right? You have a direct drive, and that looks like a, a P. There we go. Direct drive versus belt drive. So let's cover this real quickly. So a direct drive machine is pretty much the standard machine that you're gonna find. Um, at the store, whether you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, um, Harbor Freight, most, a lot, most of the machines that you just find at stores are going to be direct drive. What does that mean? That means direct drive pumps, we're talking about the pumps right now, right? A direct drive pump means pretty much that the water is going to have to need to be like pumped into the machine, right? Um, what that means, all that means is it's, it's standard. So you're going to hook up to your water outlet and you're going to want your water outlet to put, uh, put out a higher flow than what your machine needs. So if you're going to pull in a 4GP machine, the water source at minimum has to be at least 4, but you always want it to be more. So you want at least a 5, say, GPM water source that's going to pump water for your, for your um, machine to pull. Now, the difference between direct drive and belt drive is with a belt drive pump, it's a belt. And I, you can look these things up, guys. That's what I'm teaching on fit. So go look these things up. A belt drive pump, a, it's belt operated. And the reason why a belt drive... Um, why you might want a belt drive versus direct drive, if you want to pull your own water source or use a buffer tank, 
a belt drive machine is going to be better for pulling the water because a belt drive versus direct drive. So a direct drive, the water needs to be coming out at a certain, you know, pressure needs to be pumped into it, right? So you, your water can't just be sitting there because the machine isn't going to suck it. So it has to be pretty much, has to, some type of force has to help feed the machine. Versus a belt drive, a belt drive can pull water. The belt helps pull the water into the machine. So if you're, if you're plumbing up your own uh, water setup, then a belt drive is going to be better for you because that's going to allow you to, um, you know, get the water power and the water source you need. Anyway, so and then the most, one of the most important factors too is when it comes to the quality machine is we want to look at getting a commercial duty machine. Guys, when I first started pressure washing, I started off with the residential quality machines. And when I started doing volume, those things became very, very unreliable. Now, most of the time, your, your residential machines are going to be a 2.3 GPM machine, um, maybe about... 3,000, 2,500 to 3,000 PSI on that machine, right? But those things are not reliable past a certain point. They're not built to be used a lot because consumers might pull their pressure washer out a couple times a year. But you as a business owner, you use that machine for hours on end every single day once you get busy. And so, uh, you know, you're going to need a commercial machine because they're built to be ran. They're built to last. They're built to run a lot, right? Very important to, to note, to note, right? So, so far we've covered... Pressure washers, we cover, you know, GPM, PSI, direct drive, belt drive, and then we want to look for, like I said, a commercial duty machine. Let's go ahead and erase this, right? So trying to move through um, information here. So pressure washers are super important. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is a soft wash machine. We'll just put machines S. Okay, cool. So getting into soft wash machines. Why would you want a soft wash machine? What is a soft wash machine? So I talked about soft washing, right, versus pressure washing. Now, understand this concept right here. We can use our pressure washer as a soft wash machine in the sense that we can, we can turn our pressure washer to, to um, use it to apply chemical, you know, effectively and safely to homes and different services um, and also rinse at a, at a good uh, safe pressure to clean homes without causing things like oxidation, which we can talk about again later. But so, but why would we want, why would we specifically want a soft wash machine? So one, once we get into services in a second, you'll understand this more. But with a soft wash machine, it allows us to apply a stronger mix of chemical. And we're getting ready, that's the next thing we're gonna cover is chemicals. But it allows us to apply a stronger mix of chemicals. So say we want to um, use it to pre-treat concrete or, or, you know, or very, very bad brick. We're going to need to use a stronger mix and a soft wash machine allows us to do it. Now, a soft wash machine, the way best way to describe it, is like a pump sprayer on steroids. Now, let's get this concept right here, right? Whatever you mix up in a soft wash machine is what you have, right? So say we mix a 50-50 mix, 50% water, 50% bleach, and let's just say we mix this into a pump sprayer, right? That's what we have. That mix is not changing. We have a 50-50 mix. But now, let's take the same thing and say we're using a pressure washer, right? If we make a 50-50 mix, and, um, we're, but we're using a pressure washer to apply that mix, right? Water is being injected to that mix every time, you know, the mix is flowing through. And let's just say we're using the method called downstreaming, which well, I'm going to go over that. So don't be confused, guys. Like I said, pause if you need to go back and forth. I have a lot of information I'm trying to spill right now. But anyway, so um, if, we're, if we have a 50-50 mix but we're applying it using a pressure washer, that, that mix is now going to be diluted. And let's say we're using a downstream rejector, which might dilute the mix 20 to 1. Now it's going to be less strong, right? But sometimes when, when we're cleaning, we need a strong mix. We need a mix that can't you know, be diluted. So we're washing, say, for roof cleaning. Um, and this is the main thing that I use my soft wash machine for, is for cleaning roofs. Um, and also to uh, apply to pre-treat and post-treat concrete, which I do recommend doing to get the most effective results, right? So with soft wash machines, as I covered a little bit earlier, you might have a 12-volt uh, machine, which is through a 12-volt pump. And this is a, a soft wash machine can consists of one, your pump, two, your hose, um, and you're going to need a tank. To obviously for it to pull from those are your three main factors obviously you're going to to squirt it so 12 volt pump we got a air diaphragm and i'm gonna just put dia because i don't uh, my spelling sucks or we can go with a gas pump 
right? Is this machine essential to start off with? No, if you're just starting your business, you might not need a soft washing machine. You might just want to start with a pressure washing machine. Um, work that, make a lot of money with it, and then invest in a soft washing machine. That's what I did. I did not start with a pressure wa I mean, a soft washing machine to begin with. But I, most of the professionals do are going to have both systems. They're going to have a pressure washer and a soft washing machine because they're very much both necessary to run an effective cleaning business, right? So we're going to move past this. Not super important. I know I'm covering once again, guys. I know I'm covering a lot, and I really hope that this isn't doesn't get too confusing for you guys. But um, our next thing, so covered equipment. Let's talk about wash methods, right? Let's talk about wash methods. So obviously, let's retract again for a second. When we're cleaning, when we're in our pressure washing business, um, most of the time, our popular things we're gonna be cleaning is washing homes. That's one of the most, you know, called for services. Obviously, there's commercial services as well, but most one of the most popular things you'll be doing is cleaning homes, right? You're gonna be moving algae, mold, mildew off the siding of homes and make them look good again. So different types of homes you have or sidings, you might have uh, masonite, hardy board, uh, aluminum, uh, stucco, and vinyl. My, my market, where my region, most homes are built with vinyl. You might be in an area where most, where a lot of homes are built with stucco. Either way, they're cleanable, right? But how do we wash these homes? So let's just say we're using a pressure washer as our main piece of equipment. Now we have this pressure washer. How do we clean from the ground? How do we effectively apply the chemical that we're using um, to the home to wash? And so next section we're going to talk about specifically chemicals, but we're going to get into that right now. Well, I'll kind of talk about both right now, right? So, just in case you guys don't know, this is probably, I should probably start off with this, but when we wash, our most popular chemical we're using is sodium hypochlorite, aka bleach, right? Bleach is our, pretty much our go-to chemical for cleaning a lot of things, right? That's our most common chemical. So now we gotta figure out how do we get the bleach on the siding to wash, to properly wash it. So our different wash methods are gonna be one, we're talking about downstreaming. Ooh. Two, X jet. Three, we can use a foam applicator. Four, let's go. Uh, four, we're going to say we can just use a pump sprayer. Five. Okay, so for our wash methods, I kind of rank them um, from greatest to least as far as sort of kind of, but I'm going to go through each one of these methods that we can use for when we're washing a home or whatever it might be. These are just methods to apply the chemical, right? So pretty much washing is this. Washing, most of our washing is going to be Apply a chemical, rinse, repeat. Apply a chemical, rinse, repeat until it's gone, right? So, we're say, let's just use a home for example. We're washing a home, two story home, whatever, it's vinyl siding. Just has the typical, you know, dirt, organics, mold, mildew, whatever, algae. How do we wash this? How do we wash this home? Well, one, which is a great one right here, and which I would recommend, is downstreaming, right? Downstreaming. There's something called a downstream injector. Your machine may or may not have one built on it. I have a video where I talk about downstreaming. It's probably the most recent video on my channel other than this one, which you can go look at. If I, I should have brought my downstream injector in here to show you guys. But anyway, so a downstream injector, say for, I'm gonna try to picture this in your head. We have our pressure washer and we have our downstream injector, which um, has a line attached to it, a, a siphon tube that we connect to the downstream injector. That siphon tube is put in a bucket of bleach, right? So we just drop that second tube into a bucket of bleach. The downstream injector pulls from that bucket of bleach through our hose, through our pressure hose, right? And out the end of the wand. And that is how we apply the chemical to the, to the house. Now to do that, we're gonna need specifically what's called soap nozzles because for a downstream injector to work, it has to be pulled at low pressure and you cannot, a downstream injector will not work if you're using a high pressure nozzle. 
So we're going to pull that down, pull the mix through the line using a soft, uh, using a soap nozzle. All this stuff, guys, is researchable. You can go look it up. So anyway, the perks of downstreaming is that it's efficient. A downstream projector is pretty cheap to buy, about 15 to 30 bucks to get one. Um, and now you can start washing, right? Now, the downside about downstreaming is that it might not pull a strong enough mix to clean everything. For washing homes, very effective, uh, you know, easy to use. Once again, go watch that video so you can see the visual of it. But a downstream injector, uh, just the concept is pretty much, like I said, we're pulling bleach through our, through our uh, high pressure hose, comes out the wine, and we can just applicate the house, right? Clean one story, two story, depending on what nozzles we have. Number two is an XJ. This is another uh, tool that can be used to apply chemical. XJ, the concept of that is instead of the water bleach coming through our line, the uh, bleach is actually pulled at the end of the high pressure wand, right? We just attach it, there's a siphon tube that attaches to the end of the wand and it's pulling from a, a five gallon bucket, whatever, that has SH in it and some soap, surfactant, and we can just uh, turn the switch on off on the XJ and apply the chemical to the house there. Downside is we gotta carry a bucket and move that around as we wash the house. Upside of an X jet is it can pull a stronger mix than downstream. Another method you can use to to uh, to get the chemical to this onto siding is called a foam applicator uh, or a high foam cannon applicator. You can look that up as well. This costs you about twenty bucks. Is it the best method to do it? No, but if you're on a budget, you could use this as well. Four least recommended. This is like you know you have no money at all really. Pump spray. You're pumping up some bleach. Um, and a pump spray applied to the house. This is by far the slowest method to wash. Um, but hey, if everything else went to hell um, and that's all you had left on your truck was a pump spray, you could get the job done. And then five is a dedicated soft wash machine to, that you can use to apply the chemicals. So once again, we talked about soft wash machines previously. This is another method you can use to apply the uh, chemical. Remember guys, the point of this video is so you can take these concepts and start doing your own research. This is a whiteboard stuff, so I cannot show you guys every single thing. Now, if you want, I'm going to give you guys a quick visual of, of uh, downstream injecting, right? So, I'm not an artist, so let's be mindful, right? So, what is downstreaming? Okay, so I want to give you guys a visual of this, of this wash method. I think it's important, right? So let's quickly let's just draw a pressure washer. Um, this is going to be terrible. It looks like a toilet. All right, let's just say, guys, this is terrible. This is our pressure washer. I know it does not look like one at all, but this is a pressure washer. And this is our like our engine right here, right? All right, cool. This is where we plug in our high pressure hose. So this is where the water. Say the water is there. Like this is where the water's been coming out, right? Here's our high pressure hose, and then here is our. Uh, we're gonna draw our little gun. And then there's water. Okay. So, SH, siphon tube, and then all right. So, bear with me, guys. This is the worst art ever on YouTube, but bear with me so you guys can get the concept, right? So downstream injecting, right? Just in basic form, I'm gonna break down each thing so this drawing makes sense. Here's our pressure washer, right? This is a pressure washer if you don't believe me. <laughs> Here is where uh, we plug in our high pressure hose. This is where it's coming out. This is where pretty much the uh, pressure washer and the hose is plugged in. But right here is where we connect our downstream injector before we connect into our hose. So our downstream injector would quick connect into the machine, and then our uh, our hose will quickly connect into the downstream injector. Our downstream injector, like I said, has a uh, siphon tube which drops inside this bucket. This says SH, right? That's what that says. It says SH, so no hypochlorite, our bleach, right? So as we squeeze this trigger right here, this starts running. The SH starts pulling through the line. Woo! 
all the way through and then out and then let's draw a house house and then we can wash right that's downstream ejecting so once again just to uh, recap pressure washer downstream ejector siphon tube drops in the bleach as when we connect it it pulls through the line out in the gun and we can wash that was terrible art guys but there is a quick example of what downstreaming is okay moving along because this video is at 25 minutes um and i want to keep this going so let's talk about now important chemicals to note when starting this business this is probably a very 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 valuable section right here what chems do you need all right what chemicals do you need to run this business very important to know all right guys so let's talk with number one bleach aka sh which sh stands for sodium hypochlorite that is our number one chemical that you need to always have on the truck because that's what we're going to be using most of the time but that cannot be your only weapon, right? But SH bleach, get that into your head. So when it comes to bleach though, there are different strengths of bleach. On the shelf, at the store, I'm gonna just write this down. Typically, you're gonna get a 6% mix from your typical just household bleach, right? We don't really wanna use this. Professionals, we let to go for 12.5 strength bleach. 12. 0.5%. There's also, if you go like Home Depot or Lowe's, there's the pool essentials, uh, high, uh, pool chlorinating liquid that comes in 10% or 10.5. Either one of these you'd be safe with. You want to stick with 12.5 or 10.5. Where do you get this at? So your 10.5, you can get by the gallon, um, from Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, depending if it's summer in the pool cleaning area, they'll have 10.5. Uh, bleach, but 12.5. If you want, what you need to look look up is look up a pressure washing supply store near me, or a janitorial supply store, or just you know chemical suppliers near me. And a lot of times you'll be able to find 12.5 sh, and then normally it's gonna be cheaper. And um, you're gonna bring your own bucket so you can get them refilled, um, so you get stronger bleach because bleach can over time get weakened. So you want to get you want to pump fresh sh. Um, from a supplier. So for me, you know, I have a few suppliers that aren't far from me from where I live So I can go there, you know daily to get my um, SH to clean with 12.5 is what we want to go with right 12.5 strength bleach or 10.5 if you can't get it right But other than that what other chemicals do we need to have? Um, on deck at all times or in this case we face it different situations, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and race this bottom part So I can have some space but remember bleach 12.5 10.5 to 12.5 percent is what we want to look for. Now, the other chemicals we want to keep on hand is F9. Oops, that's FP. I can't even write. F9 line of chems. All right, so F9. F9 is a company, they produce different chemicals. Um, I'm gonna go over their list of chemicals real quickly. But I like the F9 line because one, they have, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna write F9 on, on front of all these, but they have F9, uh, let me make sure I get all the names right, so give me a second really quickly to look up all of them so I don't forget any. F9 products. All right, here we go. All right, so F9, they're a lot of chemicals. They have F9 bark, which is for rust. And also this is for um, battery acid, rust battery acid stains and a little bit more. They have double eagle. Oil stains. 
They have F-Flow, which is good for, um, oh yeah, Red Dirt. And then they have Groundskeeper. I forget exactly what Groundskeeper does. But the F9 line, I have every single one of these products. So once again, let's recap. So F9 line products, they have Bark, which is for rust, battery acid stains. So if you ever come across a rust stain, this will get it out. Old stains, this will get it out. F flow, um, F flow Florence stains and red dirt stains, calcium. Um, and then groundskeeper, this all this is good for um this is good for like tire marks and other like um more commercial work if you're dealing with like oil different oil stains and stuff like that. Groundskeeper is also effective. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this part right here. Well, let's see if I can write somewhere else. Um, I'm gonna erase this top part under what chemicals you need. We're just gonna write above this. So some other chemicals that you might wanna keep on hand at all times is uh, you have ox, oxalic, sorry guys, my spelling be off. Anyway, we're gonna put oxalic acid, and I probably spelled this wrong. Oxalic, this is good for rust, wood brightening, and also uh, concrete. So oxalic acid, this comes in paddle form. This is good for rust stains wood brightening, and also brightening up concrete. That's an important one to keep on hand. Another one you can use for red dirt is gonna be aluminum brightener. That's another one you wanna keep on hand. Then sometimes you're gonna come across situations where you're gonna to need to do gutter whitening. So sometimes you're going to come to car situations where you're going to have gutters that are, um, that when you wash them, they're going to be blackish. They're going to have these, what's called uh, tiger stripes. A great way to fix that is going to be, so this is called gutter, gutter whitening. That's the, the surface the surface is going to be needed. And the chemical to deal with that is gutter butter or Ellie's Awesome, which you can get from the dollar store. It's called Ellie's Totally Awesome. Works great as well. Let's see another chemical we want to keep on hand. So... Um, really, we just want to have a chemical to cover most of our situations. Another one that we want to keep on hand as well is called Clean Saw BC. Clean Saw BC. This is good for cleaning wood and also oxidation. Okay, so Clean Saw BC is good for cleaning wood and also oxidation removal. If you don't know what oxidation removal is, oxidation is pretty much this powdery coating, happens on mainly vinyl siding. Um, that if you rub your finger across, it rubs off. The siding sometimes looks a little bit faded, chalky. And if you use high pressure and you don't wash properly, you can remove the oxidation off the home and the home will dry looking uneven, like almost like somebody did graffiti on the siding, just took a pressure washer and went to town, you know, went to pound town on the siding and it looks terrible. The way to fix that is going to be oxidation removal and Clean Saw BC can handle that as well as LA Awesome can handle that as well. And sorry about my E's looking like peas. Um, but these are the main chemicals. Let's recap real quick. Oh yeah, and I'm going to write one more. A uh, soap or surfactant. Alright, so a soap or a surfactant is also important to keep on hand. And um, what that means is this pretty, the soap and surfactant mixes some of the bleach to help uh, to create less runoff so the, so the bleach can stay on the siding longer and be more effective. So if you're, whether you're cleaning roofs or washing homes, soap or surf, uh, surfactant, um, there are name brand surfactant. Some guys, 
This is not recommended. Some guys just mix Dawn some, and side bleach. It doesn't really go together. They shouldn't do that. Um, you can mix, some people mix um, like Gain laundry detergent. But those are like the just consumer type ones. If you go to your pressure washing supply stores, you can find actual uh, surfactants that are made um, to be used with bleach, that are sustainable bleach, um, and like won't, uh, won't weaken the bleach over time. So one of the ones I use, which is a gener generic one that a company near me makes, it's called SB40. That works great. It's highly concentrated and works good. But a surfactant, that just goes with your bleach. Um, it also helps too when you mix a surfactant in with your bleach when you're um, cleaning windows um, to help leave more of a spot-free rinse, um, mixing in a little surfactant or, or degrease in there. So let's recap real quick. Our main chemical is bleach, aka SH. 10.5 to 12.5% we want to look for when using bleach. F9 on the products, they have bark for rust stains, battery acid, double eagle for oil stains. Eflo uh, for red dirt and Eflo for rent stains. Groundskeeper helps with like tire marks and um, uh, um, oil stains and stuff like many stuff you do with like commercial uh, you know drive through pads. This is a great one to have. Uh, gutter whitening, so to fix you know those tiger stripes and to get the gutters looking as good as new, we're gonna use either gutter butter. Ellie's awesome. There's some other products as well, but I'm just gonna give you guys a few. Clean saw BC oxidation removal and cleaning wood. Oxalic acid, definitely recommend you have this on hand at all times. Good, you can mix this up and use it as a rust remover, a wood brightener, or a concrete brightener. And then for red dirt as well, um, um, with, along with the F9 and Eflo, you have a uh, aluminum brightener, which you can get this from Napa um, Auto Parts. All right guys, time to erase this. I am zooming through information right now, and we are at 35 minutes, so I do not have a lot of time left at all. Um, so let me see what else I want to cover before this is too late. So let really quickly, um, I'm going to cover this for like two minutes. Let's talk about setups. What is your setup? So setup means, you know, what type of setup are you have to run your business? And I'm going to talk about this in a second. So do you have a, you want to run a trailer setup? Trailer. Or uh, we have trailer, we have um, a van set up, which is what I have, uh, truck bed, these are your main three setups you're going to have. Trailer, you're pulling a trailer, pretty much all of your equipment and it's built out on a trailer, so your pressure washer, your hose reels, soft wash machine, maybe you're carrying your own tank. Trailer, um, upside of this. You know, normally you can get, you can obviously pack in more equipment and stuff uh, and build a pretty nice setup with a trailer. Um, downside is it might run a little, you know, you're going to need a truck to pull it. Um, and it can get kind of pricey depending on what truck, kind of trailer build, build out you're doing. Truck bed, obviously all you need is a truck and all your setup is going to be built into the bed of the truck. So that's just, you know, your the upside is you don't have to pull a trailer. The downside is you might be limited on space. Van setup, um, this is what I'm running right now, running van setup. Uh, the upside to me is that I keep my equipment, you know, safe and locked up, um, you know, not exposed to the rain, stuff like that. Um, downside is might be like ventilation. Obviously, you're going to be limited on space in a sense. When I say van, this is like a cargo van, not like a, a minivan set up, right? So these are your main three. Um, they all can run around the same price depending on how built out it is. Um, so, but if you want to look at tiers real quickly, so these are set up. So trailers, you can get a trailer for about, I would say four, 5,000. Truck bed, obviously, depending on if you have a truck or not already. A van set up around the same range and on up. Um, but let's just talk about this for a second. So those are your three main types of setups you can build out for your, uh, starting off your business. And now, really quickly, let's talk about, while well, I still have time, what services we can offer. We're going to cover this real quick. Services. What services can you offer in this business? So I'm going to zoom through a lot of these services. Um, you know, and you choose every business that I have, to, I have to offer every service. But this is how essentially you start making more money is one, dialing in on one service, becoming really good at it. And two, is beginning to upsell services. So the more you're good at it, obviously the more money you can make. Because when you go to a home, people need different things done. So by being able to package up, you know, deals, you can increase that average ticket size. 
So, I'm going to just run through this. We're going to talk about each of these different services. House washes. Roof washes. Surface cleaning. Gutter. Clean out. Gutter. Whitening, window cleaning, wood restoration, paver sealing, I may have missed something guys but these are the most common services when you're running a business. One is going to be washing houses. It's going to be your probably your most common service. Okay, and then obviously you have uh, commercial services. Commercial services, you might be looking at like uh, drive through pads. Gas stations. Etc. Right? So, really quickly, house washes, roof washes, surface cleaning, this means driveways, you know, uh, sidewalks and whatnot. Gutter clean out, so cleaning out the inside of the gutter is very popular, you know, after fall. Gutter whitening, window cleaning, wood restoration, paver sealing. These are all services you can have under your umbrella of your pressure washing business, which is why you want to understand that pressure washing isn't just pressure washing. These are all services you can offer. Obviously, if we're going to do roof washes, we're going to need to have a dedicated soft wash machine. But these are all very profitable services that can also, you know, be that you can run a standalone business on. Um, I'm not going to say how much you can get to on each of these, but you know, if you just wash houses, you can make, you know, you can make $100,000 a year, $50,000 a year just washing houses. Roof washes, another high ticket service. Um, you know, I love the combination of both of these because a lot of times houses need roof washes as well. High ticket combination right here. A full package a lot of times consists of a house wash, a roof, and some surface cleaning. Wood restoration, profitable, but you want to learn how to properly clean wood. It's not a service that you just want to jump into. You can destroy someone's deck if, you're not, if you don't do it properly. But these are all services that you can add under. There are some other ones that you can um, add as well, but these are some of your main ones when it comes to running your exterior cleaning businesses, you can have under that umbrella and then you get into commercial services, which I don't really touch commercial, so I'm mainly focusing on residential, but you can do your research for commercial services and there's a lot you can add. All right guys, so really quickly, last thing I have time for really is gonna be talking about pricing. I'm gonna run through this and then we're gonna be wrapping this up because I don't have much time to cover more so I can keep this video at uh, about 45 minutes. So, last section we're going to cover. I wanted to cover more, but we're running out of time. Pricing. All right. So, we're going to cover two things. House washes. Washes. Okay. For washing houses, we want to be at about 10 to oops 10 to 15 cent ten to 15 cent a square foot and I'm gonna change my battery out real quick okay so we're back up so um for washing houses Typically, we want, we want to be at between 10 to 15 cents a square foot. And so just to do some math on that, so let's just say we're going to pick a number like 12. Let's take a 2,000 square foot home times times uh, 12 cents. That means you're going to make 240 bucks on a 12 on a 2,000 square foot home. Now, guys, this is not, what well, I'm going to tell you about pricing, this is not, uh, you know, concrete. This does not mean that you have to go exactly buy this. What I want you to understand, one, is just kind of getting an idea of pricing. Can you be higher than 15 cents? Yes, of course you can. But um, 
When it comes to this, I would say the biggest thing with pricing is you do not want to be the $99 guy. Do not charge $99. Do not be that guy in the market. You're going to work yourself to death and you want to calculate and understand expenses running your business, right? And let's just do some math really quickly. Um, let's go for this. So let's just say that we're charging $99, right? So we think we're making a hundred bucks, right? But one important thing to know when running this business is it's costing you to operate the business, right? Also, what do you want to make hourly? What do you want to make hourly after, you know, taxes and expenses, insurance, chemicals, all those costs? Listen, if you're charging $99 and most of the time if you're charging $99, you're probably not that experienced in the business anyway. So you're probably taking longer. So let's say you're charging $99 and it's taking you uh, two and a half hours, right? So let's just say a job takes you two and a half hours. I'm doing this math, guys, because when I first started at 18, this was me not knowing what I was doing. So two and a half hours, a hundred bucks, I thought I was making money, right? It was better than working at Chick-fil-A. Better than making minimum wage. So let's take a hundred dollars and divide it by 2.5. Now you're just making $40 an hour, but this is before expenses, right? So now we have to deduct the chemical cost. So let's just say for the chemical cost, it costs you, let's just say eight bucks. Let's say gas costs you four. Let's say insurance. Let's just put out a cost of 15 bucks on this job. I'm not even gonna add anything else, guys, but let's just say, let's just do that math real quick. So we're at $99 minus 15 minus Eight minus four, seventy-two dollars, and I haven't even talked about taxes yet. So seventy-two dollars, two and a half hours, and then now we're gonna take the seventy-two dollars, and like I said, guys, it's still taxes. So this will be less than this. Divided by two, and now we're at thirty-six bucks an hour. Do you really want to be out here working for thirty-six bucks an hour in your own business? And then there's other expenses that could happen, right? Wear and tear on your machine. So bottom line, is we don't want to charge nine dollars. We want to have a minimum for our company every. Minimum for companies are different depending on you know what type of business you're running. If your business is more lean, does your minimum have to be as high? No, but let's just say you're starting off your minimum is 150 bucks. Not a terrible number to start at, right? So let's say your minimum is 150 bucks. You don't have a lot of high costs. Not bad, right? So it means that our minimum house wash we're gonna do is be 150. But we wanna you know just keep an idea. Here's a, just a range to start off with. Other factors other than square footage you wanna look at is uh you know is the house one story or two story? Does it have things like dormers? You know, the ease of maneuvering around the house. There's a bunch of plants. Things, factors are gonna add more time to your wash you wanna calculate, right? For roof washing, for uh, let's just say if you clean, if you wanna start cleaning roofs, you wanna look at being at about, you know, 25 to 35 cents. Probably more of a sweet spot is gonna be like 30 cents. 30 cents a square foot, right? To wash roofs. More risk involved. We're climbing up a ladder. Sometimes we have to walk the roof. Um, be sure to check with your insurance to make sure you're covered. But that's the main thing we'll focus on with pricing, guys. It kind of just gives you an idea. Um, the last thing I'll throw in here is that you do want to, when you start off your business, whether you're brand new or not, have a CRM, Customer Relationship Management System. You're going to input all your customers in there. So from day one, you're putting in your, your customers in that CRM so you can keep track of them. And then later on, the next year, the next season, you can you know, have contact with those customers and you know, increase repeat business. So have a CRM. What I recommend is Square Appointments. It's 100% free. It has some amazing features. So check that out. Um, the last thing I'm going to say, when you're just getting started um, um, to grow your business, take a lot of before and after pictures, do great work, make sure the customers are satisfied, and get as many reviews as possible. Ask for reviews. You know, ask for reviews, 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 reviews. Get you a Google My Business page up, a website, these are essential things, business cards, flyers, hit the ground running, Facebook ads work great, um, you know, start working on your SEO. Those are some tips for marketing, Come, you know, I ran out of time, but super important, guys. So hopefully, you gained at least one thing out of this video. I know it was long, I know it was all over the place, but I had a lot of information to cover. Um, and if you still have questions, which I know you will, one, take all the information I share with you in this video and go out and start doing your own research. I gave you the information so you can now fish, right? So now you have these words, these terminologies, you can go out and start doing your own research. The other thing that, that I do have in place, guys, for those who are interested, I do have a course available on, you know, pressure washing, starting your pressure washing business. I cover a lot of things and I cover them more in depth. And you also can ask me questions. That is on sale right now. Um, the link will be below this video. If you're interested, great. If you're not, great. It's perfectly fine, guys. 
This isn't a, a you know a money pitch. Um, it's very valuable. Could also uh, include a free website in there as well for the price of it. Something like it's that is you know pretty much uh, there's a lot of value in that for a very very reasonable price. But once again, guys, if you don't have the money or don't want to spend it at all. Don't feel obligated at all, guys. I gave you a lot of information. You can go run with it and go start doing your research. Join Facebook groups um, and just start learning, taking notes, guys. Um, but like I said, that is available. And the other thing I'll say, check out, if you're on an even tighter budget but you want to get some information, check out um, a book by the author. Let me pull up the name real quick uh, that I think is valuable. It's like 10 bucks. You can get the ebook. Give me one second. I'll give you guys the exact title of it. But this book is, I think, great for beginners. And it is called Pressure Washing uh, One on One Guide by Heath Phelps. You can get it on Amazon Kindle. 10 bucks, that's gonna give you some guidance as well. But guys, I recommend if you're gonna start this business, go out and do your research, learn as much as you can um, to get the most solid foundation to be able to grow your business the fastest. If you guys don't do your research, trust me, you'll be stuck in the same spot or a small spot for a long time. And so, my only goal from this channel is to add as much value and help you guys as much as possible. I, when I started off, guys, I had a lot of questions. I wish I would have had videos like this and other videos I put on my channel or, you know, programs or books available. But I didn't know about any of those things, guys. And so, for a long time, I struggled. And so, if I could be of any value to you guys, if you have any questions, comment on the video. Like I said, check out the course. Check out his book. Um, and go to this information. Go do your research and learn more and more and more. And I wish the most uh, success on you guys for um, starting your business this 2021 season. Once again, I hope this video helped. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.